Hello everyone, I'm Dijon. And I'm Ayara. And welcome to the Mustercast, the podcast about the art of storytelling and how it's used across different mediums. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see our channel grow, and to click the notification bell so that you're notified when we post. Uh, Ayara, you can start with what media you've been consuming lately. Alrighty. Um, of course, the Nier Automata anime, which I've been enjoying a lot. Started Trigun, loving Trigun. Um, well, that's about it. I, I've been the, the Last of Us uh, live action adaptation is on my list, but like I said, Automata and Trigun are like I'm watching those right now. So once, once I'm in a place where I feel like I can stop and start something else, then I'll start The Last of Us. Okay. Uh, so for me, um, I saw, uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, um, a couple weeks ago. It was really good. Um, the main villain was, was very, um, fun to watch. Um, it's just it's essentially the big bad wolf, but he's also death. It's great. Um, Ooh. I've rewatched Black Adam, because there's this, um, reaction YouTube channel I watch called Blind Wave, and I subscribe to their Patreon and do, like, full-length reactions where, you know... I have them, you know, I, you know, press play at the same time they press play and essentially watch it while they're also watching it. And um, I did that with Black Adam and that movie is not worth seeing more than once. Second time watching it, I got like, once it was like in a third act, I was like, ah, this is not a good movie. <laughs> like the first time I saw it, I was like, I had fun. This is a good time, but it is not worth seeing more than once. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's definitely not worth seeing more than once. It's not a great movie. Um, finally watched Army of Darkness, the third Evil Dead film. Um, because Evil Dead Rise is coming out this year, I decided to um, finish up uh, the Evil Dead movies. Next on my list is um, Evil Dead 2013, which um, isn't a remake or a reboot like people think it is. It's supposedly supposed to be a part of the same timeline, so that's interesting. And I think I might finish the last two seasons of um, Ash vs. Evil Dead when I, if I have time. Um, I've also been watching Seinfeld. The first season of Seinfeld is only five episodes, which is weird. It makes sense, what? but but yeah, I was I was looking, I was like, wow, the first the first season is only five episodes. That's strange. But I used to watch Seinfeld a lot when I was a kid, so I decided to rewatch it. It is still really funny. Mm. Seinfeld's a good show. Um, there's definitely times where because it's a show that started in the '80s, they make jokes that are very like topical, and I'm just like, I'm I don't understand this joke. <laughs> this is an old joke. I don't get this joke at all. But um, there are more than enough jokes that are just universal. Um, Castlevania. I finished my rewatch. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, honestly, now I'm really hyped for uh, Castlevania Noc- Nocturne, the next season that'll be um starring yeah. Richter Belmont. Um, still upset they skipped Simon because Simon t- timeline wise takes place before Richter, and he was the first Belmont. Like, come on, you can't just skip my boy Simon like that. I hope if they do a third season, they do Simon. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. At the very least, like mention him, something like that. Whew, let me tell you something. That third season sucks. <laughs> it's so I think I'm like bad. one of the only people who likes the third season. I liked it. I hate it so much. It's so hard to watch. It's so slow. Nothing is ever happening. Specifically, they had no idea what they were doing with Cypher or Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> they had no idea what they were doing. And St. Germain, you said it before, Like he's he's not a likable character. He just isn't. There's nothing about him to like. Like he's even, just like comically evil. Like, <laughs> like his his like uh motivations aren't even that interesting. Right. Like okay. I don't even he just, understand the material. <laughs> oh, it's it's he's just not a fun character. The stuff with Elucard was good, but it it was rushed in my opinion. Mm, and all that yeah. time they wasted with Saint Germain could have been spent <laughs> with Elucard. Okay. And uh. Yeah, but the stuff with Isaac and Hector were the best parts of season three. Oh, great. absolutely. Um, season four was great. Um, there were some slow parts with Cypher and Trevor again, but not as slow as it was in the third season. And again, Saint Germain, like I don't care. Like there was a whole episode when that they dedicated dedicated to like showing you what he did after third season. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care. I could care less about Saint Germain. Right, for Get real. Get this bad off my face, but um. <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise, it was it was it was it was pretty good. Um, hopefully, they fix that pacing problem and have and all the characters are interesting in Nocturne. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, 
So I've been playing a lot of Dishonored lately. So um, I finally finished the um, first game because the first game, Dishonored is. I'm in. A, I was in a similar situation with Dishonored as I was with um, The Last of Us, where I played a little bit of it over some um, on someone else's console like years ago, mm-hmm. around not around the time the, the first Dishonored came out, but it was definitely around the time the first Last of Us came out. But never played it in full and just watched it on YouTube. But when the second one came out. I did get that game and played it several times over. Mm. Um, was it Dishonored Two came out twenty sixteen, and it came out a couple of days before my birthday, and my mother got it um, for me for my birthday. And yeah, I love that game. I played it through twice. There's two um, different characters you can play. I played as both of them. Um, and then replaying the first one, I was just playing it the same way I played the second one, which was I didn't care about like not killing people. I was just doing whatever I wanted <laughs> and just right. making sure I got the missions done. But when I but after playing the first one, I was just in such a hype mood. I played the first one, then I played the DLC, and I was just like, "Man, this game's good! Like, it's one of the best stealth action games ever." And I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna play the second one, and I've just been playing the second one. It's funny because I have I've talked to you I've talked to you about it off pod, but like I have a bunch of games in my backlog, but I'm playing this game that I've already played twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I, I do that all the time. But I've decided I'm, I'm... to do a um, no kill run. And I, mm. I finally know what it feels like to be a superhero with no kill rule, but you make a mistake and kill someone. Because, yeah. <laughs> cause I was agonizing over the fact that I made a mistake and kill the dude, and I knew I did, but I, I was like, maybe he didn't die, cause I like, there's a power you can, you have when you can link two people together, and if you like either kill or knock one out, they both get knocked out. Oh, so wow. I did that, and then one of them fell off a cliff, and I was just like, oh. oh. No. I mean, I, I saw him fall, and I was like, "Is it?" I was like, "It's not that far of a job. If I dropped from here, I would have survived." And I was like, "He, but he might be dead." But I don't care. I just kept going, and then I completed the mission. But I only had had to do. I had already completed the mission. All I had to do was like elf, exfiltrate. But I was mm-hmm. like, "Let me get this one thing before I leave." So I went, got that, and then left. And then it said, and the stats at the end, you killed one person. Now killing one person when you're trying to do a low chaos run of dishonor doesn't completely like ruin the ending of the game like you don't like kill one person and up oh, you get the bad ending no you have to like kill a lot of people <laughs> right, right so it didn't ruin that but i didn't want to kill anybody <laughs> I, was, I, I feel like the like the circumstances in which that person's death happened were not your fault like <laughs> me personally i would have just been like I, i'll take the l and move on yeah, yeah, you have I, a lot more yeah, integrity than i do the only reason i didn't is what the only reason I did, I did move on, even though I didn't want to, is because I didn't have a save in a in a good spot where I could go back and fix that. I, I would have had to like redo a bunch of stuff that I didn't feel like redoing to try and un, to make mistake to, to undo that mistake. So I was just like, forget it. I'll just move on. I'll just have to live with the fact that I inadvertently killed this man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's I was really right. over here feeling like Daredevil and Chip Zdarsky's run where he he made a mistake and killed somebody. And, and then and then he put himself and then he went and like turned himself in and went to jail. <laughs> but uh moving on to animation. Uh so Mark Hamill, um, you know, famously known as Luke Skywalker, but also voices the Joker in Batman the Image Series and tons of other stuff with the Joker and including the Arkham games, um, explains why he doesn't expect to ever return as Joker. And he says um, they will call and say they want you to do the Joker and my only question was is Kevin Conroy Batman and without Kevin there that doesn't seem to be a Batman for me so it seems like he just he's retiring playing as Joker since Kevin Conroy passed away mm-hmm. sad to hear um, you know rest in peace Kevin Conroy I'm still in the middle of playing Arkham City and eventually I'll replay um, Arkham Knight as well and um, I think I said it last podcast you were on about how I would like a remake of Arkham uh, Asylum. Yeah, you did. You did. I remember. And how, like, The Last of Us opened up the door for, like, a remake that is essentially just a visual upgrade as well as um, adding accessibility features and better, like, a better menu overall. I would love something like that for the Arkham games. Because they still hold up. They could just use a visual upgrade and some accessibility options added. So we're going to talk about Velma. I'm sure you've heard plenty about oh, this show. So, so much. I didn't watch it. Um, I watched like three different reaction YouTubers watch it and I'm not going to pretend like I have like 
a huge opinion on this because like I said I haven't watched it but I also right. like can tell it's something that I'm not going to like so I don't yeah. want to do what a lot of people have done which is hate watch it and because of that make it really popular yeah so honestly I saw this thread on Twitter where it was like that's that was the whole point of it to like get people to hate watch it so they talk about it so they'd still make money from it anyway and I wouldn't be surprised I personally won't be watching it either just for a myriad of reasons yeah so one of the reactions reactors I watched um, named Your Butt Tevin said that um, you ever feel like a show is created to sabotage the exact kind of idea that it tried to represent mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so funny because it's like it's such a weird show where it's like um, you're not sure like what what their target, target audience is because one second they'll be trying to make a really forced and hammy joke about like representation in media and then next thing you know they'll have a joke where Velma says verbatim um, that comedians were funny funnier before the Me Too movement which is wild insane and like bruh it's, this show's crazy <laughs> and of um, was it another um, YouTuber I watched um, uh, named Alana Pierce said that the show rants at you more than it um, it tries to tell a story like it's constantly making references to TV tropes and so much so that it overshadows the plot. It's always just trying to make a joke and like make fun of other shows. And it's like, I think this, the thing about the show is the third person I watched it actually enjoyed it for what it was. And I think it's the type of show where, and this it's, it's unfortunate. This is the thing that happens a lot nowadays is that you can't make something original without like a attaching an IP to it and I think it was a case where they wanted to make something original like they they probably did not plan for this to be Scooby-Doo you can tell yeah. because Scooby's not in it like they probably right. did not plan for this to be Scooby-Doo at all because none of the characters none of it just doesn't feel like Scooby-Doo none of the characters feel like Scooby-Doo characters nothing it felt like they wanted to make their own thing but they threw Scooby-Doo on top of it just so that they could actually get people to pay attention to it specifically the people that were you know funding it to pay attention to it and actually allow them to make the show Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be able to make it, which is unfortunate. Like, let people make original things. <laughs> it's, it's, it, um, but you know, it's put people in a situation where, um, they now feel like people are kind of like trash talking the idea of a, uh, people use the term, uh, uh, mm, it's very specific. I think edgy. Yeah, edgy is the term that a lot of people are using to saying like it's an edgy Scooby Doo. And I think, People are, are mistaking mature for just being super edgy, over sexual and gory when like that's not that's not what that means. Like I think people do want a more like adult, like uh, animated um, Scooby Doo show, but that doesn't mean you have to make a bunch of references to like pop culture or like have it be super gory or super sexual or anything like that. You, I feel like the the um you know those are things that what am I trying to say like a mature rating could give the Scooby-Doo franchise some more room to play in like of course when it's more mature you, you want a little bit more romance maybe for it to be a little raunchier for it to be you want there to be like some some blood because at the end of the day it is like the show is all about like murder mysteries <laughs> and like you want them to take advantage of that fact if it were to be mature but at the end of the day it still has to feel like Scooby-Doo a great example is like Mystery Incorporated which is still you know it's a show aimed towards um teenagers really and it just incorporates more mature themes and a more uh, like a, a overarching plot lines happening in between all of the miscellaneous adventures. And that's all you really need for a, a more mature Scooby-Doo. Just the, the through line and just a little bit more scary situations with like the, the monsters as well as just a little bit more romance. That's what people really want. They don't necessarily need it to be like Velma. Right. It's a weird show. Um, uh, also, I should point out that Charlie Grandy is the writer of the first episode and a lot of, and is a, a he, I don't know, his name showed up in the credits a lot. Um, and like people are like throwing all of the the blame on uh, on Mindy, but it's like this Charlie Grandy is, <laughs> because she's like ex exec executive producer and voices Velma, and I'm sure she probably has written some of it in some of the episodes. Um, mm -hmm. But Charlie Grandy also is like a big part of why the show is the way that it is so if you're gonna um throw blame on her you should also be throwing just as much if not more blame on charlie grandy right 
but uh try gun um so how, how many episodes have you seen all of the episodes or just the first or two just the first just the first yeah i'm still working on it yeah so um yeah there's three episodes so far but that third episode i'm telling you it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna make you go oh okay i see it's i see so the fourth episode is supposed to introduce wolfwood which is like my probably my favorite character in try gun <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to see Wolfwood in the in episode four, but um, yeah, episode three just stuff got real. It, it was crazy. Mm. The animation was incredible. They just did a lot of cool stuff in episode three, but I don't want to say too much. Um, moving on to comics. Mm -hmm. So I've read All Star Superman by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly, which is essentially the most popular Superman story of all time. So I'm going through a list of like some popular Superman stories because I like Superman, but I don't read a lot of Superman comics. The last one I read before All Star Superman was um, Grant Morrison's uh, action comics run from the beginning of the New Fifty Two, or not the beginning of New Fifty Two. It was more like the middle, but um, yeah, it was another Grant Morrison written Superman comic, and the comic is essentially about Superman is dying, and mm -hmm. it's how he's he's spending his last days before he dies. And like most Superman stories, it's very inspirational and full of hope, which is which are the things that I live for, and it's why I like Superman so much. I used to be the type of person that um that didn't like Superman because he was overpowered and all that stuff. But then I grew up, <laughs> <laughs> and I got some light in my life, and you know, <laughs> I realized that we need stories about hope and optimism. We just need that. Not everything needs to be grim and dark. Um, do you watch totally sarcastic productions? I've heard of them and I've watched a couple of videos. Yeah, I feel like you'd like their content a lot if you, you checked it out. They have Thank two you. podcasts where they talk a lot about um, Superman and they're really good. They just talk about, you know, what Superman is, how some parodies um, miss the point. It's just, it's really good. Or how some people miss the point of certain parodies. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Earth 2, it's New 52 Earth 2's comic uh, about an alternate universe within DC and um in this universe Hawk Girl is basically Laura Croft but with wings and it's mm -hmm. honestly really cool <laughs> and I was like I need more of this character um <laughs> I finished James Robinson and Nick Nicholas Scott's run on Earth 2 um and it, it was real good uh I like the different takes on all the characters and um it's kind of like a, a post-apocalyptic world it takes place in but like post-apocalyptic meaning like both that it you know, in the way that it usually does, but also that it was from a little invasion by Darkseid and his forces from his planet, which is called Apocalypse. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so I read the, not the latest, but the latest issue of The Flash that was up for, not for free, but with the, my subscription to DC, um, DC Infinite. Mm -hmm. um, so the Pied Piper, which is a used to be a villain, no longer a villain, helps The Flash escape the newly deputized rogues because the rogues have been deputized by the mayor. So Flash goes directly to the mayor to find out what's going on and is attacked by the rogues again. But his wife and his children, his wife who has powers because she's pregnant, supposedly, <laughs> and the baby mm -hmm. is like giving her powers <laughs> um, with the Pied Piper helps him defeat the rogues. But then it turns out that the mayor is like a god. <laughs> hmm. It's wild. I love the Flash. This, this Flash run is so good. Anybody who wants to read the Flash, you can just start from, I think, uh, seven... Um, issue 763 you will not be confused just start reading there it's great uh, World's Finest uh, so a little, little spoiler but David the character they introduced um, who's alternate who alter ego is um, Kid Thunder he's a kid who was sent to the main un um, Earth by his parents before his universe was destroyed similar to like Superman And um, but he, he was kidnapped and tortured by the Joker um, and another villain named the key that I mentioned last time to find out the secret identities of Superman and Batman mm -hmm. and um you know he was rescued by the Teen Titans Batman and um Superman and then he chases down Joker and like beats him to near death screaming Whoa. I'm screaming if I ever see you again I will kill you <laughs> and then on the next and final page we see that this has been a low-key origin of Magog who you that name that name means absolutely nothing to you but <laughs> he's, a, <laughs> he's a superman villain that was first introduced in kingdom come by um, alex ross 
and it was such a good twist. I when I when I when I tell you when I turned that page, and I saw Magog, and I was like, oh, it's Magog. I was <laughs> I was shook. I was shook so hard. But uh, less in in comics, Angela. So there's this character in Marvel named Angela, who is um Thor's sister, and all I did was see a piece of artwork. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna find it on my Instagram and um and put it up on the screen, but. I saw this artwork of like a cover for a Thor comic where it was Thor and Angela and I just saw it and I was like man she looks really cool so I googled her and I'm looking like man she looks really cool I want to read every comic she's ever been ever so <laughs> I google her and I'm reading her like I'm reading a Wikipedia to see like what is she what is she from and it turns out she actually started off as a character and she was created by uh I hate that I remember their names. Two of the like most famous comic book <laughs> creators on the planet. Hold on. Wait. It was Neil Gaiman and uh, Todd McFarlane. There we go. Um, hey. And she was created for the Spawn comics. And she was a character in that, but Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane had a dispute over the rights of the character. And Neil Gaiman won and sold the character to Marvel. So now she's oh. a Marvel character. And wow. uh hmm, what was I about to say? What did he do? My my brain lost. So she she was introduced in like the in twenty thirteen at like in like the very last issue of Age of Ultron, but like is she was barely in it. But she was properly introduced in um Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, mm. which is literally titled Volume Two, Angela. And I had to I had to read it <laughs> and it's um <laughs> it's co-written by Neil Gaiman because you know his characters in it he was like I'm gonna make sure you treat my baby right nice. when she's introduced in this comic and it's it was really it's really good so far and I impulse bought two of her other comics immediately I didn't buy the third one because the third one has mixed reviews I'm gonna wait till I finish the other two and then mm. like read a preview of that one before I read it or decide to buy it but I am now obsessed and I'm gonna read everything she's ever been in. <laughs> you ever just see a character that just character design is just so good that you're like, I I need I need you in my life. Oh, absolutely. That's how um, that's how I got into Trigun. Actually, I, I saw um, an artist that I follow on Instagram, Drew Vash, and I was like, I need to know a what this man is from, and b I need to get into it not now but right now because it like he just has some of my favorite elements of character design ever. Yeah. So, moving on to TV and film, I didn't know where to put this because I don't really have a section for music because we don't talk about music a lot, but we should probably talk about music more. Mm. And we will look you later, but, um, okay. excuse me. I feel like I got a burp, but it's not happening. It's like air in my chest. Oh, excuse boy. me. So, Harley Quinn and Joker Sound Mind is a seven episode Spotify narrative podcast starring Christina Ritchie, m most, you know, famous. Um, for playing Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family movies from the 90s as Harley mm -hmm. Quinn and it tells the origin of Harley Quinn from her perspective um, there's a um, audio there's a podcast I would suggest called um, Batman Unburied on Spotify starring Winston, Winston Duke the guy who plays Umbaku in Black Panther as Batman mm -hmm. and it's really good it's like ah, it's so good it's like Batman his parents are alive and he's a doctor or he's specifically like a mortician not a mortician. Right. That's not the, the word for that at all. He works in a morgue. That's not a mortician. Uh, they have a very, it, it's a very specific and long name that I can't remember at the moment. But he works in a morgue. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just really good. And he's essentially using that to try and solve murders. It's good. It's amazing. I would definitely suggest reading, I mean, excuse me, listening to Batman Unburied, the like, um, narrative podcast. It's really good. But DC signed a deal with Spotify after that blew up. Which is also getting a second season, um, and now they're making a bunch of other stuff too, including this one, which I'm excited to to listen to. It comes out um, the 30th of January. That was neat. But Stranger Things, I'm gonna jump to that. Um, you have you watched all of it? I haven't, but I know everything that happens. Okay, good. So you don't care about spoilers? Yeah. Nope. Fantastic. We're gonna talk about Stranger Things. <laughs> so I finally finished season three. It took me a while. So. I, the first time I watched Strange Things was in school. Like, my teacher started playing it one day when we weren't doing anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, we watched, like, the first two episodes. And 
then I went and started to watch Blind Wave react to it and then decided to watch it myself and then eventually got up to season three and season four and all that now I I started watching season three like sometime like late last year and then I finally finished it a week ago and then jumped straight into season four like and just like binged it (laughs) and season four was incredible Um, very long episodes but I didn't feel the length because I was just obsessed and just wanted to watch it all right right sorry I was drinking water um so yeah uh, I I knew it was gonna happen I I can't really say I got spoiled because at the time I didn't care but I knew Mm -hmm. that in a trailer for season 4 that they showed that oh yeah I should probably say spoiler alert before I start spoiling things but um uh, spoiler for like every everything (laughs) Stranger Things so I saw a trailer for season 4 of Stranger Things like way before I even sat down to watch season finish watching season 2 and or finish watch season one actually um <laughs> so i knew that hopper was alive so when he died at the end of season three even though i knew he was alive i mm-hmm. still cried i was just like what? and here's the thing this happened in another show where it usually the the parent dying isn't what gets me it's the kid's reaction that gets right. me because right. paternal it's- paternal stuff just hits me hard every single time it just makes me ball my eyes out. And I'm just like, you can't do this to me, Stranger Things. I know he's alive. Why are you making me cry? Right. <laughs> this is so sad. And then at the end of season four, a character dies. And they get brought back, but they die. And I thought they were dead. And I was just <laughs> like, no. How dare you kill this character who has been better this season than he ever have been. And you just murder them. They killed like two characters. <laughs> But one of them only only one of them stayed dead. It was so sad. Bad. <laughs> this show is just depressing. But next season yeah. is supposed to be the last season, so they're finally gonna destroy Vecna or whatever. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. The re- <laughs> the reveal of who Vecna is was incredible. Mm. And like the moment I figured it out was it, it was the moment when they wanted you to figure it out. So for those well, I, if you're watching this and you're getting spoiled, I guess it doesn't matter if I say for those who don't know. So, <laughs> um, Wizard, <laughs> there's an orderly that shows up in flashbacks with Eleven. Um, who I saw him and I, and for some reason my brain told me because it was a flashback to back from, you know, back in season one. My brain told me, oh, this is, this guy must have been in the first season and they're bringing him back for this flashback. Shout out to him getting that Stranger's Things bag, you know? I was like, Shout out to him for coming back and being able to, you know, get that money. And I, every time he showed up, I was like, just shout out to him. And then he kept showing up and more and more. And I was like, they're giving this random orderly a lot of attention. And then it turns out that he was number one, like the first psychic experiment of all those little kids. And then it was revealed that he was a kid from a flashback who murdered Freddy Krueger mm. and that that probably sounded insane to anybody who doesn't know what Stranger Things is um, yeah. uh, Robert England the man who played Freddy Krueger had a cameo on Stranger Things um, gotcha. as a, an old man whose family got murdered and he got blamed for it but it was actually his son who killed the family um, because the, the main villain in season 4 is basically Freddy Krueger <laughs> so they had Robert, <laughs> Robert England um, cameo and yeah um so my brain i was just like i was like oh, he's number one and then i was just like oh, he's vecna and i was it was i was just shook i was like this is so good shenanigans great i can't i can't wait for the last season so a lot of people don't like in that in the last two seasons will hasn't been like doing a lot but the reason i don't care is because in the first two seasons that kid was going through it <laughs> He was going through so much trauma. And I was just like, I'm happy that he didn't have anything to do these last two seasons. He deserves a break. <laughs> you can't keep putting this kid through all this. But in the fifth season, it seems like he might, he'll, he'll probably be more important and have more to do. So I'm excited to see that. Um, the Last of Us on HBO. So <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything. But 
The first episode was literally a movie. It was like an hour 30. So, like, it's a long first episode. Right. But, um, for the most part, it's telling the same story, but making enough slight changes and adding just enough new context to situations to keep it, like, exciting for people who um, already played the games. And, um, a lot of the actors are doing a great job, like, m- mimicking the voices, um, from the games. Like, what is it, Tommy, um, Joe's brother? When the dude who played him walked in and started talking, I was like, that's just Tommy. <laughs> he just sounds just like him. Everybody, almost everybody, um, sounds just like the actors except Marlene. And you want to know why? Why? Because it's literally just the same voice. It's just the voice actress playing the character. <laughs> Well, that's crazy. Yeah, she's just she's the only person who's actually playing the same character that she played through the game. <laughs> that's the only reason why. <laughs> so, um, based on a preview that they showed at the very end of the show, which you shouldn't watch if you haven't played the game before. Um, actually, that's not true. Because if you watch it, you won't understand what's happening because you haven't played the game before. So, never mind. You can watch the preview at the end. But um, mm-hmm. it's essentially like a this season on, like what the season will be without like explicitly spoiling big things. It's just showing you like what like just to like keep you interested to see if you want to watch the rest of it and based on what they show the entire first season would be the first the entire first game and based on the pacing of like the last two episodes and what the third episode is about to be i can already tell what's what's going to happen on each episode so yeah Yeah. I'm, i'm excited um so the the opening of episode one is a fictional talk show interview that takes place in the 60s about viruses and one of the guests um, talks about cordyceps and how they can't exist in humans because our body temperature is too high. But if the Earth were to get warmer, mm-hmm. they could mutate and be able to exist in warmer climates, which is scary. Very scary. Because the Earth is getting warmer. <laughs> yeah. And they could mutate <laughs> and exist in former climates. We could really have a zombie apocalypse, and that would suck. <laughs> Slack is a very, like, that's an understatement, <laughs> I think, honestly. And we know after the pandemic that 100% it would spread everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so a change that they made that I was not a fan of at first until I thought about it and had some, and like, saw what some people um, had to say about it. So in the game, there are spores, like airborne spores, and characters have to put on a mask when they enter these areas. Um, and it was a cool way of showing that. Um, do you know the premise of like the game? <laughs> like, would it be a spoiler if I told you certain things? No, I know the premise. So like, you know that Ellie is... Do you know? <laughs> I don't want to just say I it. I don't know that, okay, but I... Then, I, I no, I'm not going to say it. You don't know that Ellie is, so I'm not going to say what she is. But she okay. is. So that's an important aspect. <laughs> right. And in the game, they changed that because in reality, if it was airborne, we would just all be dead. <laughs> For real. Because like you could very easily mistakenly walk into a room with it without knowing and and you're infected. That's it. Whereas in, yeah, a, video, that's- whereas in a video game, it doesn't matter. In real world, like you would just be dead. <laughs> so instead... They did something else that actually made it that you couldn't do in a video game, but you can do in a show. So they did a reverse where it's um, funny enough, it's very similar to strange things. It's a hive mind because uh. mush- mushrooms like burrow in the ground and like con- connect to each other like across like miles. So you can step make a mistake and step on either either kill or infect it that's connected to the to the ground through the. I forget what they call them, the the mycelium, I think. Mycelium, yeah. Or you could like step on it by mistake and you could alert a, every zombie within a certain radius and they'll know exactly where you are. Mm. Which is something you couldn't do in a game because that would get real frustrating and really annoying really yeah. fast if you had yeah. to avoid stepping on stuff. That would get real annoying real real quickly. Um, so, like this actually is a like a, a a mission in the first game where you do that and a lot of people don't like that part of the game <laughs> it's it's like there's glass on the ground you have to hide from this person and if you step on a the glass they'll know where you are and like chase you and people right. don't like that part of the game i personally didn't have a problem with it because it was essentially a boss fight so it's not like it was like a permanent gameplay thing 
but just based on that fact you can tell that people wouldn't have liked it if it was a hive mind and you cl- you stepped on something and they were all just after you but it works really well for the su- suspense in the game um and yeah i've told you this um off pod but like they the a very specific character they actually i feel like they handle that character and their story better in the show than they did the game so i'm excited to see how they do all the other characters as well mm, um mm-hmm. and i don't know what they're gonna do it's every episode or oh, actually at this point i feel like they will but at the beginning of the second episode they also is a they also go to a separate thing that's that's connected but separate from the main story where it's like a lady who in indonesia um uh, she's like a, a scientist of some kind and they are getting her to like study the cordyceps and yeah. she essentially tells them like oh well we're all dead the only thing you do is bomb the city <laughs> and stop it from spreading because we cannot we cannot make medicine for this it's over for everybody right it's crazy that the show's great um so the last thing i have and we might just talk about some other stuff after this but is um suicide squad kills the justice league um game made by mm-hmm. rocksteady the same studio that makes um the arkham games and this takes place in the arkham universe um mm-hmm. so it has a battle pass and people are afraid that it, it'll be like another like avengers situation um right where it's like a uh what do they call those games uh games as a service type model where they're always trying to gouge you for money and they right. claim that it's only for cosmetics and even that's kind of weird because some of the like one of the best parts of superhero games is unlocking the costumes oh, like right. um like with spider-man but granted in all the other batman games that's also been the thing you've had to right. like buy the costumes um Honestly, I'm so hopeful because, like I said, they've done this before. They've had it to where you had to buy different costumes before. So, hopefully it is just for the costumes and it doesn't affect the actual, like, gameplay. Because it's a four-player co-op and that's another reason why people... People are just afraid of co-op games now because one co-op game was bad. Like, calm down. Right. <laughs> it's like when people, like, when, um... Because Cyberpunk was delayed so much and it was... It, it turned out to be not be very good. People were like, whenever a game gets delayed, that means it's going to be horrible. And it's like, no... The problem with Cyberpunk wasn't even that it got delayed. It was because, despite the delays, they actually didn't have enough time to make the game. <laughs> right. Like, people think that it's bad because it's delayed. No, it's bad because... They didn't finish the, it. <laughs> they literally didn't finish it, even with the amount of time that you think they had. People think that they had 10 years to make it. The reality is that they were planning on making it for that time, but it wasn't until the last five years of those 10 years that they actually had to sit down and make it. Right. So yeah, I hope this game is still good. Um, they showed uh, for some reason I forgot that they showed gameplay because my brain kept saying they showed gameplay, but I, but I'm not sure until somebody posted the video on on um, Twitter like the gameplay looks good, guys. Like, don't get too worried. And I was like, oh yeah, they did show gameplay and it looks really fun. And people are mad that every character has gun guns, but I'm like, so they all are characters that look like they would use guns, and they also the Justice League, you know? They also have um their own special abilities as well so it's not just guns but yeah it's it looked it look like it'll be fun i hope it's fun um yeah i'm excited for it but that's all i got i didn't realize my notes were so short i thought i was gonna have at least enough to go an hour that's wild that is really wild that is really crazy but have you been reading anything i, I forgot to ask that in the comic section um i've been reading shadow's house still it's still updating and it's starting to get a little insane and evil um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Trigun, of course. Um, I was I started Spy X Family, then kind of dropped it because it, it felt like it was just the same thing over and over again. Uh, so I, I kind of yeah, dropped that's it. That's why I'm, I stopped watching the show because I felt like I was enjoying it. And then I was like, it feels like there's no progress happening. Yeah, it's like I love the Forges. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're great. I love their dynamic. But it's just like it's the same. It's the same like over I, and over. I'd enjoy it more <laughs> if it was a movie. Yeah, I feel like me. it's it's not enough to keep me entertained for a show, because mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, it's just it's the same thing over and over again, and I don't feel like the characters like moving forward. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe one, like, one day I'll finish it. Yeah, um, the Nier Automata anime is on hiatus because of COVID until further notice. So no more Nier Saturdays for me, and that's very sad. Now it's Trigun uh, Saturdays. Stampede yeah. Saturdays. Yeah, now it's Stampede Saturdays. Now that, it. uh, and it it sucks because we only got three episodes, but they were fantastic. Like the debut episode was a little shaky, but episodes two and three 
uh, like the small changes that they made were like they lended to the narrative being better IMO. However, they did take out a character that I really, really like and replaced her with someone else and they better have a good like narrative explanation for it or I'm going to I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> Definitely so, because the character that they replaced was a person of color. So I'm like, y'all better justify this in a way that makes sense, or we're gonna have issues. Yeah, one of the games that I um, that is in my backlog currently was um, Near because I found it for um, cheaper um, physically on Amazon than it was digitally on PlayStation or Xbox. So I uh, mm. got that, and I'll play it eventually. Um, I, there's too many good games. Like next Friday, um, Dead Space remake comes out and i'm gonna be obsessed with that so i'm trying to beat dishonored before then i probably won't but we'll see um it's a time sink i definitely recommend like getting stuff that you're more like once like at, when i played automata for the first time it was like once you go automata your brain will only be automata for the time being because the narrative is so complex <laughs> you know what's weird mm. when I, like some people pronounce near automata like Automata, and I'm just like, I get it. Yeah, it's it's a so, weird word. It's a weird word, but think about it, the word that it's related to. It's related to automaton, and you don't say yeah. automaton. Like, <laughs> that's the thing, though, right? Uh, the game says it automata sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they can't decide how to pronounce it. I say automata because cellular automaton and that just yeah i say automata because of automaton and i feel like that makes sense yeah <laughs> like, I, like get, I get i get why mean. people are pronouncing it wrong because it's a yeah. weird word and like it makes sense like that happens in like like anime all the time or like just any animated show where it's, characters would like pronounce a character like a c certain thing wrong and another character would pronounce it a different way like that just happens sometimes right, right, <laughs> or, like actors would like, get in a booth and they will all pronounce the same thing a different way right and it's like people are so caught up on the automata part for the first three months of me playing the game i was like how do you pronounce the first part the near part i was like where does the emphasis go but um i played the prequel uh near replicant and they said it because the the protagonist's name is near so i was like oh that makes sense it makes more sense yeah telling it is a whole different ball game though i, I spelled it wrong like eight times uh, it's it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention that because of Castlevania, another uh, impulse. I've been doing a lot of imp impulse buying lately, of games. Oh, yeah. And Castlevania Symphony of the Night was seventy percent off. Actually, it was. Love it. It was one of my favorite Castlevania games ever. Castlevania games. Symphony of the Night and um, Rondo of Blood, like um, combo Ooh. pack together, were. Um, 70% off and I was just like good I want to play Symphony of the Night and I'll play Round of Blood maybe beforehand um, so yeah I'm excited to, to play Symphony of the Night I played a little bit of it a while ago on an emulator um, yeah. and I played I think Aria of Souls a long time ago as well Aria of Sorrow yeah I Sorrow played yeah <laughs> what were you saying? I said I, I haven't played uh, much of Aria of Sorrow but I've heard uh, things things derogatory <laughs> things derogatory yeah speaking of things derogatory Forspoken is out and, oh yeah uh, I, it's funny because I wasn't expecting I wasn't uh, planning to talk about that game at all but we have time so we might as well because yeah, me and people are saying it's kind of mid I knew it was going to be mid because I played the demo and the right. demo was mid it was super mid <laughs> here's the weird thing it's the combat has it's the type of game that you play it and go mm, it has so much potential but it just misses the mark because the it's overly complicated. It has an interesting right. magic system, and, mm -hmm. and and like fun traversal, but the controls are just too complicated. And it's every button either does something or does multiple things, and it, it's overwhelming. Right. But when you get a little bit of a hang of it, it's it's really fun, like mixing together all the different magic types. But it's it, it I feel there's too much of a learning curve and. Even once you do figure it out, it's still a lot. Also, outside of that, the world and the story just is boring. Mm. And the characters aren't super interesting. So from what I understand is a lot of people are making fun of the like the type of um dialogue in the game, which I get I don't it doesn't bother me too much, but I get why people don't like it. Um mm. But uh here's the thing. And I'm sure there's some of this, but People like to throw the race card around a little too easy sometimes. 
yeah. and are trying to say that people are shitting on this game because the main character is black and I'm like no the no. game just is mid I'm sorry right. you can't it's just like, make this about race just because the main character is black and people don't like it it's yeah, just it's like a mid game mid games I'm sorry it's... But exactly black people can star in mid games it's possible and here's the thing why are you defending a game starring a black person by an all white development team right like not only that but um I'm gonna find the tweet right now hold up because there's a tweet where a person said apparently that um the like creative director had some very interesting and kind of racist things to say oh about boy. the making of this game oh here it is so um her name is a uh, bernetta um at bernetta writes on twitter um and she says this is stereotypical way in which the entirely non-black development and writing team described the black leading characters and was um for spoken so i'm gonna read what what they said all right so i'm gonna just read this um picture she put up of an article it says mind you found fears weren't helped when Raymer and stashwick described Frey's origin story which came off as a tired amalgamation of black stereotypes those stereotypes included her being very angry her having fallen through cracks of society and being on the verge of prison before being teleported to athea it's a isekai which is right. an interesting concept for a video game um, yeah, definitely. The cherry on top of my newfound dread was um, was motion capture and voiceover director Tom Keegan describing Bolinska's mannerisms during her motion capture performance as having a very hip hoppy kind of walk. Oh, oh boy! And I w- I wasn't the only journalist to find Keegan's awkward remark and lack of black writers shown in our preview as harrowing. Yeah. So um, that was from um, Kotaku, but yeah. yeah. I, I muted for spoken on Twitter because I was like, I just don't want to hear about it. It's a mid game. <laughs> just, just get this mid game out of my face. <laughs> now I was considering it as one of those games that I'm like, I'll maybe I'll play it when it's discounted. But now at this point, I'm like, yeah, nah. Yeah, I'm good. It doesn't seem like it's worth it. F somehow. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing: this game doesn't necessarily have to get a sequel. What it does need to get is they could make another game that utilizes a very similar magic system, but in a much better way. Because right. my problem is, and I feel like this is a weird problem that I've discovered about games that are published by Square Enix, not necessarily made by Square Square Enix is like main development mm-hmm. teams, like their creative business teams is what they call their main development teams. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I learned is that it's funny that every, almost every, um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> almost every Square yeah. Enix produced game that doesn't do well could learn from final fantasy 7 remake in oh, some very specific way so for specifically with forspoken they could learn from a similar way that gardens galaxy could uh, i'm gonna say it first gardens galaxy is a good game the gameplay on the other hand can get real boring real fast because you can only play a star lord which is weird but in um final fantasy it's very similar in that there's one main character but you can switch between all the other characters and you can give each character individual orders and that's something that um guardians could have learned from final fantasy 7 similarly mm-hmm. forspoken could have learned how to juggle a bunch of different magic and being able to use that magic um with like n- not too complicated controls and what um, final fantasy does is you can map certain attacks to to certain buttons and you can press a button and time will slow down and you can pick between the magic and then click on it and perform the magic and i'm like there it's just it's a lot if you like watch a um i, I think the demo might still be around <laughs> oh. but um it's it's a strange game it's, it's okay. yeah. you know what i you know first and foremost i think the people who are defending this game are defending it way too hard like they're defending it like their life depends on it and I think right. it's a matter of, and it it's I don't think it's fully their fault because we're in a society where it feels like you're not allowed to dislike things. No, not dislike things, but like things that are mid. No, bro, you can like things that are mid. You just have to, you know, live with the fact that. Except that it's mid, yeah. You like it, but most people consider it mid. Like, let me tell you something that people consider mid that I love: the James Cameron Avatar movies. I I like them. <laughs> I like them a lot. But yeah. people, people call them mid all the time, and I get it. I get why people call them mid. 
Is that going to stop me from watching it? No. I'm going to watch every single one of them. I'm going to watch all five of these movies that didn't need to be five movies and could have just been a trilogy. But I'm going to watch it anyway. I'm, I'm going to be the reason why these movies make a billion dollars every single time. <laughs> You're real for that. Okay. If you like for spoken, that's okay. But it's mid. <laughs> and that's just how it is. Like, You know, like Tupac oh. said, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Thanks for always be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got. Okay. I'm glad you brought up for spoken because I, I low key wasn't going to mention it because I was just tired of talking about it. <laughs> that's real. But um, yeah. Um, my ads are below me, and you'll find I is at below her and the muskets at below that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more story- storytelling content, and to click the notification bell so that you're notified when we post. Peace. <laughs>